Next.js, the go-to framework for web development, am I right? But here's the thing, it's not easy to self-host. It isn't just a just throw it in a Docker container, bro. No, Next.js is optimized to run on Vercel's infrastructure, which means if you self-host Next.js, you won't get the same performance benefits as if you would deploy your application to Vercel itself. But what does this really mean? What does Vercel offer that a VPS with Docker or something like that does not offer. Well, let me break it down. Next.js is fascinating because of its flexibility, am I right? You can deploy to a VPS, you can deploy to some serverless provider like Netlify or Cloudflare, whatever you want, whatever your budget says, and whatever, I guess, your boss says. But there's still some pain points. So recently, Next.js has released some feature or a new feature, which is called partial pre-rendering. And in theory, it's a great feature. You take your static content and you serve it with a CDN. You take your dynamic content and you serve it with a suspense boundary and a fallback. This means your page loads even faster because you don't have to wait for the whole dynamic content to come from the server. You take the static content from your CDN and then render the dynamic content using a suspense boundary. This means faster page loads, faster websites, and just in general, a better experience. But the problem with that is you need infrastructure that can handle such complex workflows. And the problem is, Vercel is the only provider that I know of that supports it natively. If you want to run it on your own VPS, it won't work. If you want to run it on Cloudflare, it won't work. And if you want to run it on Netlify, it also won't work. So Vercel is the only provider who can offer such a feature. And that's why I always cringe whenever people say, just dockerize it, bro, skill issue, bro. No, it's not a skill issue, it's a framework issue. Next.js, or in other words, the Vercel team, chose to fix everything on a infrastructure level, not on a framework level. And this means people who want to self-host or want to host with a different provider than Vercel don't get the same optimizations and fast page loads as people who deploy their application to Vercel. Another thing which I want to mention right here is the next build command. So you probably assume that Vercel runs or builds your project using the next build command. Well, I'm sorry to say, but Vercel does not use the next build command, but they use a command completely custom command which is just buried in the code base. It's not documented. This means Vercel builds your project differently than you would do or than Cloudflare would or for example Netlify would, which means again Vercel has the upper hand. And the annoying thing is the command which they use is buried in the code base, it's not documented, and that's not great. This is not what open source stands for, and this is just a tactic at the end of the day to get you to deploy to your cell because you get better performance, better DX, better everything, which is great, but let's not forget, your cell is quite expensive. And let me maybe also mention what I really mean with this hidden build command. So your cell, or in other words, the next JS code base has a hidden build command. And that's what Vercel uses to build your application on Vercel. This means Vercel configures your next JS application and also optimizes it a bit differently than Cloudflare or any other provider. This means they have an upper hand that other providers don't have. And as I also mentioned, it's not documented. This is not what open source stands for and it's definitely not something which I like. So while you might be thinking that self-hosting your next JS application on some sort of VPS gives you more control, the honest answer is you probably have even less control than if you would deploy to Vercel. And let's be honest, it makes a lot of sense. Vercel is a VC-based startup. They invest a lot of money into Next.js and they have to somehow make a return on investment. But you know what? It's not all bad. In recent times, the Next.js and Vercel team have made a lot of improvements to self-hosting. And the best example for that is the Next.js 15 RC2 release candidate state thing blah 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 something like that. With this version they have now made cache control even easier. You can now configure your expire time in your next config file which means you can manage your stale while revalidate periods better so your SVR periods even better and this is especially great when you're using ISR. 
So this means Next.js no longer overrides your custom cache control values by default ones which they provide. You can now use your custom ones and that's great because it's now even easier to work with your own CDN. You don't have to rely on the Vercel CDN. Another thing which the Next.js team has finally fixed is image optimization. In previous versions, you had to install the Sharp package manually to get image optimization. And I personally often forgot that and this would lead to issues, but now it's automatically installed. I don't have to do anything and that's great. So here's the bottom line of this video or in other words, the TLDR. Yes, you can self-host Next.js on your VPS or on some serverless provider like Cloudflare or I don't know, Netlify if you want to use that. It's fine, you can do that. But you will never get the same optimization and stability and configuration as with Vercel. Vercel is the best place to deploy Next.js and as I already mentioned, it makes sense. They have to make a return on investment and with Vercel and Next.js so tightly coupled, it makes sense. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say in this video. So if anyone ever mentions skill issue, just dockerize it, bro. You can point them to this video and yeah, now you know everything you should know. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I can see you on the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And now enjoy your day and bye.